Hi there, welcome to John Jacob Studio. We are art consultants and art restorers and in this video we're going to be restoring this rather lovely painting of some Highland cattle and it's got an old damage on there that's been poorly restored in the past and it's got this rather grimy dusty surface and you can see the damage here, very lumpy, it's got some overpainting and it's been done with some permanent paint so it must have been an amateur doing this and the damage here from the back you can see it's been patched up a couple of times with some different tape and there was a price 20 pounds and the title is on the way to Falkirk cattle tryst so it's a historical piece and the artist here is H Hadfield Cubley 1883 and we've even got his address here now I'm just starting off by seeing if I can take off any of these patches this from the back just seeing what I can get off by picking with the fingers so I don't actually get much off but it's just a little exper exploratory start to see what's going on and now I'm starting to clean the front so I'm cleaning the front with a water based solution an ammonia and water solution because it's just really surface grime this painting I don't think has been varnished before there doesn't seem to be signs of any varnish on there so I'm just removing the surface grime this ghosting and any staining uh, that it's picked up over the years and already you can see some of the colors coming out and improving and once that's all dried off nicely I can start trying to improve this damage now I can't wash off this restoration so this is what makes me think it's done by an amateur it's done with some permanent paint oil paint or acrylic or something so all I can do is scrape it down a bit and try and remove as much as I can as carefully as possible because it's very very lumpy and there's a, some overpaint on there and then now we go to the back and I'm trying to gradually remove this patch from the back by soaking it with water and scraping and scratching it very carefully with a scalpel gradually picking it off bit by bit and finally washing it out with again cotton wool and water just getting the last of this paper and old adhesive off uh, but the damage seems to be not too bad it's it's in good condition there's no overlapping so I can just go ahead and re reinforce this damage again and I'm reinforcing the damage with PVA adhesive just painting it in the gap and then bridging across with some tissue paper so this is just going to reinforce it the tissue paper is just enough to hold the glue in place and bridge across the damage to give it some strength and, and, and then once that's done I can now go to the front and varnish the front and now when we varnish the front you can see how lovely this colors start coming out you can already starting seeing what this picture is supposed to be looking like and I'm trying to do a minimum intervention in this so I want to improve this damage as much as possible and I'm doing that by doing a, tr a special treatment on the damage here so I'm, I'm covering the damage with some aqueous adhesive some water based adhesive and then I'm, I'm fixing across this adhesive some tissue paper so this we call facing so I'm facing over the damaged area and this tissue paper is going to allow me to do a treatment on this damage and, and improve the level of this damage because it's very lumpy there's a lot of undulations and waves in this damage uh, and, and I want to improve that and get this as flat as possible as level as possible and this will help hide it uh, when we do the final restoration so it's a little bit of skill to get this tissue paper down I want it to be nicely stuck down no air bubbles or wrinkles in there because this tissue paper ultimately pulls tight and this helps me to level the surface so I've got to brush and wet it down a bit more and really brush out all the air bubbles make sure I've got a good fixing to the paint film and it's also protecting the paint film you see when we do this this treatment there is a risk of uh, um, losing paint so that the, the tissue paper will also hold down any paint that might get loose in the process and the damage at the back is dry now so I can remove the excess tissue paper off we don't need the tissue paper we just want that that bit of tissue paper that's bridging across the damage and I'm also going to be applying a patch to this later on so there will be a bit a bit more reinforcement and something else to just hold this damage level from the back because although this is strong enough to bridge across the damage it might not be strong enough to just hold it level it's very likely that this will show a bit in the front it will pull the canvas in the shape of this tear so I'll need a patch to just help that stay level and now I'm doing the surface treatment so that was just water applying some moisture to the back and I've got a, a metal plate because I need a firm surface to do the treatment I've got to be able to push down on that so I need that canvas supported at the back and again again an extra board here just to support it at the back when I do the treatment 
So moisture and warmth is what I'm going to be using, but these are very dangerous. The moisture and heat are what will loosen the paint, loosen the paint and, the, and the paint can fall off. So this facing paper on the front is very important to, to protect the paint film in case any paint comes loose. But the treatment here, I'm using this moisture and heat and I'm using a, a rounded spatula to gradually massage the damage, press it down and improve its level. And you can see now here it's already starting to get better. I'm using a light that shines across at an angle so I can see what I'm doing and I can see the level improving as I'm working on it. And it already is, is much, much improved. It's nearly, nearly completely level with the rest of the canvas. And always check for the heat. I mustn't get this too hot. So it's a, there's a good amount of skill involved in here. But we've been doing this for many, many years. This is a, a method of um, treating paintings that was developed by my father many years ago. And this is the patch. So now I'm using essentially fiberglass. This is glass cloth material, glass fiber fabric, with a special adhesive embedded into it. And this adhesive is called Beva, B-E-V-A. And, and this is just heat activated heat adhesive. So I'm going to be able to iron this on. But first of all, I'm just getting the shape that I want. I'm trying to get a bit, bit more of a bridge across, but not too much. And also I want to soften the edges. Because with a patch, again, a patch can show from the front. You'll see the shape of the patch pulling the canvas from the front. So you've got to try and soften the edges of the patch as, as much as possible to reduce that effect happening. And if you're lucky, you can manage to get it very good and, the, and you can hardly see the patch or not see the patch at all. And I'm using the heat, again, ironing this on, but very carefully, just the right amount of heat to soften the glue. And straight away, I come on with a nice cold iron, cooling it down. I'm not really using much pressure. I'm just using the, the hot and the cold to, to activate and set the adhesive. And once that's all done, now I can remove the facing from the front and see what the damage is looking like. And it's water activated, so all I've got to do is soak it with water and very carefully peel it off. And I've got to be careful because I've got to check that no paint has come loose in the treatment. We don't want to be pulling off any paint. And mostly this is always fine, but we have to do this very slowly and carefully to be sure. And already you can see it's looking good. The surface is looking much, much more level. And I'm just trying to get the last of these bits of paper off and wash off the adhesive. So uh, the, again, it's just water washing off the adhesive, getting it out of the damage and all the little areas and drying it off as soon as possible, keeping it nice and dry. But you can see how much improved the surface is. But there's still plenty of holes in this damage and nooks and crannies that need to be filled. So I'm filling this with, a, again, a water-based filler. Uh, just scraping it in very carefully with a palette knife and then washing off the excess bit by bit uh, around the areas where I don't need it. So this is a bit slow and painstaking, but this is the way we've got to do it. And once that's dry, I can use a cork. So this is a smooth surface with a very little bit of moisture and very carefully rub small circles round and round. And this just pushes the filler right into the places where I need it and takes the filler off the surface where I don't need it so I can see the paint around the edges and... and, and uh, because we don't want the filler in, uh, covering up any of the original paint. And again, it's a bit of a slow process, but bit by bit we get there. And then using a cotton bud and some water again, carefully clean off right around the edges. So I get a nice clean uh, filling on the damage. And now this area has been a bit disturbed by all this treatment, so I've got to apply a bit more, bit more varnish to it. So um, this will bring up the colours around the damage for the restoration process, because we've got to be able to see the colours that we're trying to match. But already you can see the picture's looking a lot better. You can see what was happening in this area. And we go over to Sheena now, who's doing the restoration. And the restoration process is, it, you might think it's artistic, but it, it's not so artistic, it's more forensic. You see, we've got to try and match the brush strokes of the artist, so it's, a, it's an effect we're trying to create rather than just painting painting in a brush stroke. We're trying to create an effect. And we do that by tiny dots and tiny lines and looking carefully. And of course, we're trying not to go over any original paint. Uh, we're trying to keep it just to the damaged area. And, and uh, even if the, the color is wrong, all that happens is you go over it again, glaze over it with a slightly different color. Because of course, the original painting is very likely different colors mixed up and put on top of each other. So there's glazing going on. And you can see here gradually gradually as the colours build up the, the, the damage starts to disappear and you can see what the picture was supposed to be like and you can see there was a, a, a farmer there who's got something in his hand I can't quite tell what it is but the picture is starting to come together and you can start to see the landscape and the perspective 
and the whole picture starts to come together again. And it's a slow process, we do it bit by bit. Each, each uh, stage of the restoration, we often stop, let it dry and have another look at it and then come back and do a few more uh, dots and lines and glazes just to get it blended in. And again, this is a, it's a natural way the artist will paint with sort of glazes, one colour on top of the other colour. So we build up the restoration in that similar fashion, glazing up one colour on top of the other colour, just adjusting the tone adjusting the hue until it blends in nicely. And you can see it here now, it's pretty much there, we, we can hardly see the damage anymore. And I'm doing the same thing on the back, because this patch looks a bit modern, I'm just colouring down the patch to match the canvas a bit, so it looks a bit more old fashioned, a bit older. And this paint will dry matte, uh, and it will look a lot more natural in the end. And here's the finished result, so we've finished the restoration, done a couple of sprays of varnish on top, but you can see the picture is lovely and bright, the cattle are shining nicely, they really come to the front and you can see before how dusty and grey it was and that, that lumpy damage where you couldn't really see anything going on uh, at all, you're wondering what's happening in that position and now you can see there's something happening there, there's actually a person there standing and the perspective comes together, you can see off into the distance another two people behind in the distance there and with the colours nice and bright you can see how lovely this painting is, the, the, the mountain looks great and even at the back here the patch has sort of blended in a bit more so it looks a bit more sympathetic to the age of the painting. So it was a lovely picture to work on and a real nice uh, treat to see how it all came together in the end and the cattle I think are wonderfully painted and this is a photograph so you can see the colours in a bit more detail, a bit more depth. So I hope you enjoyed this little video and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one.